Hello and welcome to Dax for Humans. My name is Greg Deckler, and today we're going to be taking a look at logical functions in Dax, specifically the if and the switch functions. So as you can see here, I have a ta simple table visual where I've uh, got all of the rows from my data model. Um, so you can see I've got five rows in my data model, and I've got those five rows displayed here by putting in item, date, and some of the total cost. And the, the goal is to uh, return in the first example is return a color for the, these different items. So we can do that via a simple measure. As you can see here, I'm grabbing the max of my table item. So either banana, grapefruit, or pickle. And then I have a simple if statement, which in the if statement return has three parameters. First parameter is a logical test that evaluates to either true or false. The second parameter is the what you want to return in the case of that the logical statement returns true. And then the last statement, the third one, is if, it, if that statement is false. So here I have a simple test where I test to see if my item is equal to the text string pickle. And if it is, I return green. If not, I return yellow. And as you can see here, for the pickle rows, I return green. And for the other rows, I return yellow. Now we can nest these if statements. So if you look at this more, little more complex example, you can see that's the same if statement initially where I test if item is equal to pickle, and if so, return green. If not, then I have another if statement, so a nested if, where if the item equals grapefruit, return orange red, otherwise return yellow. And now, as you can see in color two, my banana rows return yellow because they don't meet any of the conditions, so it falls through to the yellow. But my, for my grapefruit row, it returns orange red, and for my pickle rows, it still returns green. Now, nested if statements um, aren't the nicest things to work with in the world, so you, you might want to consider uh, when you start nesting if statements to instead use a switch statement. So here is the same logic where I'm using a switch statement. So the, the normal version of a switch statement in DAX takes an item like this uh, variable underscore underscore item that might have different values associated with it uh, for different rows in this case. So as you can see, I'm switching based upon uh, what I'm returning for the item variable and then the rest of the statements in the switch statement are basically pairs. So in terms of, hey, if the value is this, then return this. If the value is this, return this, etc. So in this case, if the value for item is pickle, then return green. If the item for if the item is grapefruit, then return orange red. If the item is banana, then return yellow. Otherwise, if none of those conditions are met, then I return unknown. And as you can see, it returns the exact same colors for that the nested if statement for color two did, but it's a lot cleaner construct. So let's take another uh, look at what we can do with uh, if and switch statements. So as you can see these selectors here, so you can embed very complex logic into, uh, into if and switch statements. So in this case, I'm getting the max of my item, I'm getting a cost, which is the sum of the total cost, and in my result, you can see I have this more rather more complex logical test where Essentially, this is, because it's wrapped in parentheses, this is evaluated as a single statement. So if the item is pickle or, that's the double pipe character, the item is grapefruit, so if, if it's one of those conditions, and then the and is your logical and. So double pipe is logical or, double ampersand is, is logical and. So if it is pickle or grapefruit and the cost is greater than 10, then return 1, otherwise return 0. And as you can see here, my grapefruit row, its cost is indeed greater than 10, so I return 1. For this pickle row, its cost is also greater than 10, so it returns 1. But this one returns 0 because its cost is not greater than 10. For my banana rows, the cost doesn't really matter because they're not pickle or banana. So they're always going to return 0. Now what you can do with this is in your filter pane, you can actually use this measure to then filter down to specifically the rows that you want to show in the table. So if I set this measure to only show when uh, the value is 1 and apply that, then only those rows show up in my table. So I call this a complex selector, where you're embedding complex, complex selection logic within the measure itself. Then you can use the filter pane to filter that out. So let's take, take that off, and we'll take a look at our last measure. So this, again, uh, demonstrates a special case of the switch function. So as the first parameter to the switch function, you can actually feed in the value true. And this turns it into each of the first items as a logical test that evaluates to true or false. 
So in this case, you can see I've uh, put in the same exact logic from my if statement. So this is the condition that evaluates the true or false. If it's true, then I return one. If it's not, then it falls through, and then in this case returns zero. But again, just like in the normal switch function, I can actually have you know as many of these value these you know test and then value pairs as I want, and then it'll evaluate the first one. If it's true, then it'll return the result for that. If I have another logical test, and that one you know if it's false, it return it goes and drops down to the next logical test and returns the value there if it's true. If that's if it's still false, it'll fall through to the next line, and so on until it gets to basically you know you can always include a a none of these statements are true and so you know return this instead so that's all i had for this video hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time